You're listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. And now here's your host, Rish Outfield and Big Anklevich. Welcome, everybody, to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. I am your host, Mr. Rourke. Welcome to Fantasy Island. <laughs> and I'm your other host, Big Anklevich. Uh, today's episode is number 141. You sure? And uh, we have a different kind of an episode for you today. It's a, it's a story by Rish Outfield. Um, uh, is it even a story? Uh, well, that's the different part of it. The Rish Outfield part is not different because I swear that guy like sneaks a story on like every third episode under some kind of a pseudonym. Like last, that that one guy, Sam Schreiber, he, he puts in his... He made that story up. There ain't no guy like that. That's a good point. Considering I didn't get that story and Sam never <laughs> forgave me for that. Uh, I didn't get my own story and I made fun of my own name. <laughs> no, yeah, um... Rish Outfield is not that unusual. I mean, you get a, a Rish Outfield story here and there, but this one is kind of a different story. It's more of a skit even than a story. It's it's uh, an audio drama, but it's not a drama. Uh, audio comedy, perhaps. Can't we just say it's a sketch, sir? I, okay. It's a sketch, sir. I think I intended for it to just be one of those silly things that we do to chase off listeners after the uh, <laughs> story. But, but it was uh, a little bit more... And so we made it into something more. Actually, what we really did was we've had so many times where there are big, empty spaces where there's no episode ready to go. And so we just don't put out an episode. And we thought maybe this year we could fend those off by making some evergreen episodes that can just air whenever we have a hole. And so here we go. Rish Outfield's Wedded Bliss. About the author. Rish Outfield is a D-bag. He's sitting across the table from me with a hurt look on his face. <clears throat> okay, well, I, I, I can't argue with that. <laughs> uh, can you give the background of this sketch? Of yes, what, what I can give the background. What makes this sketch? I have a hard time with skit and sketch. I always want to combine the two, and I wind up saying skitch. I, I, I don't like it when people refer to them as skits. Hey, that's our word. Um, okay. But, uh, so like you want it to be called sketch. a sketch. Skitch. You like sketch? Then? What, what is the, the the kind of shoes? The the, the overpriced. Skechers. Oh. They're, they're for people who do sketches. They wear sketchers. Really? See, no wonder. <laughs> I okay. I, you I, need to buy some, and you could make many more sketches if you did. So, anyways, uh, an interesting thing about this sketch is that we recorded it on location at the New Media Expo. You've heard us talk endlessly about it, I'm sure. Um, on the last day that we were there, uh, we had this standing by. And so Rish and Brian and I just sat down and we set up the mics. And yeah, we recorded this basically live. And yeah, it's funny. I don't know if, if, you, if I was able to get it all out or not. You might notice some of the uh, girls laughing in the background. Abby... Um, Lauren and Renee were all there listening to us, as well as Marshall was uh, listening as the sketch went on. And uh, so, yeah, they, I, I'm not sure if I was able to get... They, they laughed here and there at the jokes. And uh, hopefully I was able to disguise them. I did put in lots of sound effects and whatnot, and Travis Tritt singing in the background. So maybe you won't uh, notice the chuckling at the uh, lines. But my... Since they weren't on a mic, I think it's likely that you won't notice it so much. But uh, but you might. So if you listen closely, you may hear. Don't listen closely, folks. Sound of it echoing even today. Anyways, so uh, yeah, uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show, folks. Wedded bliss. Mark, thanks for throwing this party. Uh, I really needed it. It's not really a party, Mahardy. It's just a barbecue. A couple of neighbors, friends, some food, you know. Well, it's been nice either way. Why do you need it, Harry? What? 
You said you really needed it. Is everything all right with you? Well, Fisher, if you must read into everything I say, yes. Everything's fine with me. I, I don't read into everything you say, man. Good, good. Because my life is great, especially my marriage. Why your marriage, Harry? What? You mentioned the marriage. Is everything going okay? Oh, now you're doing it too, Mark? Yes, my marriage is fine. Because my marriage is wonderful. No complaints at all. Uh, me either. Everything's going swimmingly. Well, easy for your marriage to be good. It's all so new. How long have you been married, Mark? Me and Billy? 14 years now. Well, just under 14. 14? And everything's going well? Oh, yeah. Couldn't be better, Cheddar. Uh, and how long have you been married, Harry? Can't keep her off me. Eight years... What was that, Mark? Oh, I was just saying, lots of sex, like we were teenagers. That's awesome. Us too. For us two too, like teenagers. You two are practically teenagers. Uh, okay, well, we're doing it like pre-teenagers. Whoa, that's an overshare, mon frere. Gross. Sorry. Well, Billy and I, we're into role-playing now. All sorts of fun, maybe a little bit twisted, scenarios, kink, lots of exploration. Yeah. Georgia and I take turns being in charge of our romantic nights. We try to one-up each other. I've got to admit that I'm winning. Well, that's the kind of competition where there is no loser, right, Harry? Uh, me and Tony, we're, we're really spontaneous. It doesn't matter what time of day or night or where we are, if the spirit moves, <laughs> you know? Yes, yes, my wife's like that too. But not just in the bedroom. She's always doing nice things for me at the drop of a hat. M mine too. Back rubs, foot massages... Tongue baths, whatever I need. Really? Well, you know, that reminds me of this time when my wife... And I don't even have to ask her. She just, you know, senses it. Senses I have a need, and she runs to fulfill it. Well, sure, mine too. One time I had to go to the bathroom, and she... And my wife is the greatest cook in the world. Any dish, any type of cuisine, domestic or international, she can make it. Best you ever tasted. My wife too. But Georgia will make up her own recipes, you know? Make things better than you would have guessed they'd turn out. My wife doesn't really cook. She, she says it's not fair to ask of her. Oh. Right. Right, yeah, I understand. For hundreds of years, the woman was expected to do all the cooking, so it's kind of barbaric of me to ask her to slave away in the kitchen every night. You, I, I mean, barbaric of you. No, I'll admit it. My wife's got something of a stubborn side to her. I don't get my way all the time. <laughs> and how? Me neither, Justin Bieber. There are times when she just closes down, like there's a force field around her, and there's no getting in there. Yeah, I like the Death Star. Georgia hasn't shaved her legs in a month. Exactly like the Death Star, Fisher. How it had this invisible energy shield around it that you couldn't see. You didn't even know it was activated until you, you flew your little spacecraft into it. She uses my toothbrush. Never asks if she can. X-wing. They were X-wings. Oh, right, 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 right. And God help anyone who goes out flying and doesn't know she's put up her force field, because they'll crash right into it and explode in a bunch of white sparks on a black background. Like porkins. My wife has a bunch of moles on her back. She didn't used to have them. Tony always checks my cell phone the second I get home. Who have I been texting? What calls have I received? Or maybe she did have them, and I just didn't notice. She doesn't ask how my day was, or if there were any troublesome clients like there were the last time. She just wants to see the phone, to make sure I haven't been, I don't know, phone effing a second cousin or something. That's too bad, my lad. But Billy will do stuff like that all the time. She gets angry at things I say when I'm half asleep. Or maybe they were really light, but they've gotten darker with age. Oh, that's the worst. Your guard's always down when you're trying to sleep. Or worse, when I actually am asleep. She'll shake me awake and say, You mentioned a Gary in your sleep. Who's Gary? Is Gary a woman at the office? Maybe the moles are cancer. That would be nice. She always hugs the blankets, even in summertime. And I'm thinking, Gary... I don't know any Garys, but since when is Gary a woman's name? Seriously. And the one time I complained, she made me sleep on the floor. Georgia once made me sleep in the kid's bed. She said, that'll teach you to feel me up when I'm sleeping. Maybe you'll enjoy feeling yourself up in a bed made for a nine-year-old. Sometimes she'll bring up this car accident we had when we were dating. Another two feet to the left and I'd have died. She says she wishes the accident had been worse. Maybe it's Gary, Indiana. That's where Marsha, this hot receptionist at work, is from. She made me sleep 
naked in my own child's bed. Does that strike anybody as a little disturbing? I mean, how wrong is it that the woman I love sometimes fantasize that I died right after we met? My wife wears the same nightgown every single night. We haven't had sex since New Year's. She told me that ought to do me until at least... It's the nightgown her own mother died in! Um... You, you know, I, I was just joking about my wife. She's the best. Mine too. I was just making up things to complain about. You know, to make conversation. Wow, that's a relief. I, I was just trying to be funny. I figured you two had been telling tales just to, you know, see who could come up with the worst lie. Lies, yeah. That's all they were. Tony and me are, are doing awesome. Me and Billy, too. Just great. Hey, yeah, no problems with me and Georgia. Perfect marriage, really. And Fisher, are you two thinking of having kids soon? Kids are when things really get magical. Well, I... I... Oh, here comes your wife, Harry. She looks upset. Harry, what are you doing hiding over here? Uh, nothing. Just finishing up my burger. Where is my lucky nightgown? I checked the washer, but it was gone. Uh, guys, I gotta go. Barbecue is great, Mark. Uh, thanks, Harry. Uh, see you, Harry. What have you done with that nightgown, damn you? I put it in the dryer with my socks. Honest, Georgia. You did what? Author's note. Okay, so you want to give us an author's note, sir? No. No? Okay, good. There is no author's note. All right, I guess... Uh, so, hey, you didn't mention uh, that Lord L. Scribe Harris does a voice there at the end. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Lauren uh, was the voice of the wife at the end as well. So there's her cast list. Brian, we don't, I don't remember the guy's name, so I'm not going to say who played who. But Brian, Rish, and me were voices as well as Lauren was the voice of the wife. I, I had a good time with that story. Uh, it was It was funny. I think uh, you were telling me that it was based on a conversation that we had one day. We were just talking about this and that. And you thought, oh, yeah, okay, I'm going to write. And didn't you say you had plans for continued backyard barbecue sketches? Yeah. Uh, one time when I was living in California and you were living here, we were going to get together for Christmas break. And I had these lofty goals of us making movies. And, and if you recall, I wrote like three scripts. And sent them all to you. And I said, you know, we could make one or all of these. And do you remember how many of them we actually made? Zero of all of them. That's that's correct. Although one of them has already been an audio drama on our show as well. So there's that. Yeah, a Sleepless Afternoon and it was one of those sketches that I sent to you for a potential movie of for that that week or whatever I was going to be around here. Yeah, we did that for our Halloween episode way back when. I think it was a couple of years ago, probably 2011. See the uh, link in the show notes. Yeah, but it had really bad sound, and I didn't want people to... Uh, well, anyway. It had bad sound, so don't listen to it, okay? Yeah, F you. It's terrible. Um, and then I had an idea of a two-man show of both of us shoveling our walk at the same time. We're, we're two neighbors, and we're shoveling our walk, uh, our walks, and it was going to be like a little uh, a game of one upsmanship between the two guys where they each one is bragging about their kids and it just becomes more and more ridiculous of these accomplishments that this ki these kids obviously have not actually done and uh, i thought about doing that you know taking that script and expanding it but transplanting it to a backyard barbecue and having there be three guys and they're all trying to one up each other about how great their kids are and ultimately like that i i did take that idea of the two guys shoveling the walk and that became shoveling match where it was a right. one-upmanship kind of thing of two neighbors what, and they were bragging about who was the better serial killer that's right <laughs> um, and so uh, yeah it is basically if you're going to rip somebody off you know rip off the best uh but instead of doing the the, the kids one-upmanship i thought it would be fun to uh to do, you know, it's just like, oh, my marriage is so, so great. And the other's like, oh, yeah, well, my marriage is even greater than that kind of thing. And then have it devolve to how the truth, which is their, their marriages <laughs> are awful, <laughs> miserable things. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so to me, that, that, that was fun. And I really enjoyed writing it. And I know I got a little indulgent and it ended up being, you know, like three or four minutes too long. But uh, 
It was, it was three or four minutes long, though. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> but it was a blast reading it live with you know, the other It really was. Guys. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I had a hard time at some points because, yeah, people did laugh at the jokes and stuff. And I was, A, I was going, oh, geez, that's going to come through on the audio. And also I was, you know, having a hard time not laughing as well and ruining the, the sound and having to retake it or whatever. You know, it, not like it's a Saturday Night Live skit where everybody loves it the most when they actually make themselves laugh or whatever. It's something that we were going to try and produce and use. But it might have been an interesting experience experiment to do it with the the laughs in like a live sketch, like a Saturday Night Live sketch. Mm -hmm. And you can hear the audience laugh and they just have to wait until, you know, the audience stops and they go on. But I don't know. I, I, I still in the back of my mind, because it was so much fun writing and performing, thought maybe I would do the, the kids one up and do a sequel where, you know, <laughs> there's three guys and they all start talking about the kids. I, I, if people like it, I will definitely do that. Okay. So yeah, you've got your chance, America. You get to choose who will be the next American Idol. Wait, you get to uh, vote on this, the future of the backyard barbecue. <laughs> will there be more or not? You know, I, I do tend to monopolize our show with my writing and all that stuff. And I, I, partly it's because you don't write the, as many sketches as you should. But uh, that day that we were there at the New Media Expo recording, you had brought something. Well, sort of. I forgot to bring it. I had, I still had it available because it was on my keychain uh, USB stick. But I had printed some out and I left them at the house, just like I did with your story. We had to figure out a way to read it off of the various laptops that everybody had instead. But yeah, I had brought something and uh, it's a story that we will do on this show sooner or later. I think sooner probably than later because... These placeholder things are a good idea. Yeah, and it can't be all you. It has to be me too. Despite the fact that you want it to be all you, it can't be. I Oh, I I'm, <laughs> I forgot to tell you, I did record an episode of the Ankle Cast for you. Oh, you did you? Put it oh, up thanks. Next week. Thanks, yeah. I, I just that. went ahead because it had been so long since you had done one. <laughs> um, but yeah, one, one last thing on this is uh, we've talked to other writers and we've talked to one another lots of times about writing and coming up with character names. And how do you come up with names? And how important are the names to you? Can you just say boy one and boy two? And then when the story is done, change boy one to Renald and boy two to Bernard. And, uh, <clears throat> and you know, go on from, from there. And, and in this one, all of the characters have something. Their names have something in common. And I, I'm planning on doing that for the next one as well. All right. So you have to figure out what it is. Oh, it, it's no fun if they have to figure it out. Oh, well, then you cannot figure it out. There you go. Just know that you will not figure it out. <laughs> uh, is there anything else that you want to talk? I know we haven't been going very long, but your child keeps making these, these noises like, a, like a, a baby. Yeah. Yeah, I think my wife might want some help. I, I think I hear my wife calling, um, uh-oh. Is she wearing that nightgown again? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, hopefully people didn't take offense to that, uh, to the, the subject matter. Uh, is it possible that they will? I suppose it's possible. If you, if you think, if you think you might be offended, then you probably will. Well, thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, who knows? It's easy with comedy to offend somebody because everybody will put themselves in that place and suddenly think, What? You stole my life. Um, but, <laughs> Sorry, Clay uh, Duggar. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's possible that somebody might be offended. But, you know, it's not meant to offend. It's, it's, it's all made up. It's fiction. If anybody should be offended, it's me because it was based on a conversation that we had. <laughs> do you want to reiterate that conversation or did we basically do that through the characters? I think we probably did through the characters enough. So we'll just leave it at that. All right. So we've got an announcement to make here. Tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> no. All right. Hey, good news, folks. I somehow convinced Big to have another contest, another writing contest for the Steve. Which Wait, means writing contest? I thought it was just going to be a uh, contest of prowess and fighting skills. I figured I would finally win. Oh, it's a writing contest again. Damn it. I'm going to get another one. 
Uh, yeah, well, I figured I better get this announced right now before you change your mind, before you come to your senses. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're, we're going to have another writing contest, which means submissions, in a way, will reopen briefly. It will be like, the port- we can only hold the portal open for a few days, sir. I'm giving it all she's got, Captain. Scotty, we need warp drive right now or we're all dead. So the contest, this is the announcement for the contest, and we're not going to open submissions for the contest until our next episode. So, but this is announcing what it is. That's right. So just chill. Yeah, right. Till the next episode. But it, you, knowing us, that may be a very long time to chill. True enough. This is the announcement for the contest and a plea for participation, a two-tiered plea. Wait, this is the three-tiered contest, though. Oh, yes. Okay, well, so tell everybody what the oh-so-clever title of this contest is. Okay, the oh-so-clever title, as spoken by Rish Outfield in a moment of sheer brilliance the other day, I mean the other moment, right before we started recording, is that this will be the triple word score contest. That's right. It's sad, really, how long it it took to come up with that. Yes. Because... There were like five other suggestions before then, as lame as the final product ended up being. But who cares? You know, what's in a name? I mean, a a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Get thee to a nunnery. Oh, okay. See ya. But, uh, so, so the title of the contest is the Triple Word Score Contest, and it's a short story contest. A uh, very short story. Oh yes, contest, we should give, say. give the limitations there. The, the uh, first limitation on the story will be that it will be between one and two thousand words. The story length. It may not be two thousand one, and it may not be nine hundred and ninety nine. No, that's probably not true. We'll probably give you a pass. Just tell us it's a thousand, and we'll just believe you. Yeah. And the reason we wanted it to be short is that we don't want there to be a year or a year and a half in between the announcement of the contest and airing these stories. We just wanted to go easier on the on Nicole because we're sure as hell not going to read these. <laughs> and we uh, we just figured the turnaround time would be much, much faster if they're shorter stories. And um, so, OK, there you go. Between a thousand and two thousand words. And it can be on any subject that they like or any genre that they like, any tone. What you have to do for this contest is you have to volunteer. You have to sign up for it, basically. You pledge. You pledge that you will be participating in the contest. So what you have to do is send an email to editor at doonstief.com. In the subject line, write T-W-S-C... Or contest, or opt-in, or hey, you guys, could you please let me participate no, in the contest for once? Because last time you wouldn't let me because you... No, don't do not do any of those things that Rish suggested. That. Those are all wrong. Oh. Um, and you write that into the thing, and then you, you know, tell us your name and that you're volunteering, okay? And once you're volunteered, we're going to put your name into the list. And the next episode, we are going to go through... And we're going to assign you your triple word score. Okay, now what we're going to do now is we're going to tell you how the triple word score works. And we're going to make a, a post on Facebook, a post on... Well, I guess the forums. Make we'll, a post, we'll make okay, a-, a post on forums. We're going to open up Twitter uh, and even an email you can send these things in. Basically, we want as many random words... As you can come up with. You just spit out a bunch of random words and we're going to write them down on slips of paper. We're going to put them all into a big hat. And then next time we do the episode and we give everybody their assignment, we will say, okay, Rish Outfield gets. And we pull three words out of the hat. And the three words in the hat must somehow fit into your story. That is the triple word score contest. Now, can they be any kinds of words, or do we need them to be nouns? Because let's say somebody wrote ferociously as a word. That's just an example. Would that work? It's like, hey, you drew ferociously. Does that mean you have to say that somebody did something ferociously or in some way incorporate something being ferocious? Uh, Should we limit it to nouns? 
Um, I guess we probably don't want like names. You know, I think it's fine. If somebody says Margaret Thatcher, bathhouse, lawnmower, and you have to write a story that incorporates those three things, I would be interested in reading that story. It's like, what is he going to do? You know? Is that okay? okay? I suppose. Maybe we should have talked about all this stuff before we started <laughs> recording. But well, I, it we just started to, and then we just said, okay, let's record, and we never did get to this part. It just seems like there's a great possibility for fun, kind of like Mad Libs or something like that, if we let people put whatever they really, you know, whatever they want, and, you know, somebody out there says, oh, boy, I hope I don't get Margaret Thatcher. Please don't <laughs> let me, you know, I... I that seems like it would be fun, but again, it's it's hard because I'm close to it. But I'm going to participate. I'm going to write a story for this. Okay, I'm not. Oh wait, I mean, uh, I, I will. Um, so I am putting my name forth as the first participant, and however many there are before our next episode, before we record our next episode, those are the people who are are participating in the contest. So please do it quickly. I mean, yeah, chances are it'll be four or five weeks, but you never know. I mean, we, somebody may finish an episode and say, here you go, a day after this episode airs. Should we uh, give them a date to be volunteered by? Maybe it would be best if we had a deadline. Just, I, I wouldn't want somebody to hear this six months from now and think that they could <laughs> still participate. Okay, so we will say that you must uh, have sent us an email to volunteer for this contest by April 7th. Okay, so that's the deadline. That's a Sunday. Right. And we'll probably get together and record the next day. Uh-huh. And so on that episode, we will say each person's name, each person who is participating in the contest, will draw three words, and you're stuck with those three words. Those are your triple uh, word score. You can kind of emphasize one word over the others, or, or you can give them all equal weight, or, you know, I mean, just as, as long as... All three are part of your story, right? Yeah, they must. They, the, the words have to at least at least one of the words has to be. I would say a decent part of your story. You know what I mean? You can't have somebody just start out their story. Margaret Thatcher, bathhouse, lawnmower. Said this guy in a random way, and then move on and never mention those words again in the entire story. That's kind of a cheat, uh, and so that won't be that won't score you points. If you want to lose the contest, then do that. We want you to actually give at least a few of these words importance in your story. Okay, that's fair. So the three things that we're asking people are, one, send us an email at editor at dunesteef.com saying that you want to opt in to the triple word score contest. Okay. Second, we would like people to give us words, suggest words that will be in the drawing. Yes, even if you are not participating in the contest as a writer you may still participate by giving people words to throw in the hat as many words as possible will make it more fun i think it will especially if some of you come up with devious fun words of like oh i hope i hope muncie draws mine (laughs) um and then third if people would like to volunteer to be judges to read all of the entrants and rate them score them uh just so that there's more eyes on every single one of these and uh you you may do that as well the same way editor at doingsteve.com say hey i'd like to volunteer to be a a reader yep and we'll put you in touch with nicole okay so that deadline that i that big gave that is for entering the contest and for giving us the words after that you can still volunteer to be a reader uh maybe you'll want to hear how many people are actually going to be in the contest because if it's like 16 and you don't want to read 16 stories then you'll know if it's three and you don't want to read three stories then you're a lazy sack of crap all right is there anything else we need to say Uh, i was gonna say um how long will the people be allowed to write on this story have we decided that will it be a month like as per usual our contests i i think so a month seems Fine. I think we gave five weeks for the Broken Mirror story contest. Um, but since these stories are shorter, uh, most people probably could write them the day before the deadline and, uh-huh. and, and they'd be fine. Okay. So it, you will have one month from the droppage of the episode? Yeah. On our next episode, we will give the deadline for the story as well, right? Right. 
Okay. So, and, and if you want to follow big on Twitter, if you want to follow big on Twitter, he'll probably, uh, let people know anything that changes. We, we next episode, we will do the drawing. And if there's any questions that people have asked about the contest that need to be addressed, we'll answer those then. Like let's say someone says, well, I want to enter it twice and only choose one or the other three word groups will tell you, no, you can't do that next time. But we'll, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, there was a, a question on the last contest or the contest before last about publishing all of the stories, whether they win or lose. Let's clarify that for this contest. Oh, okay. Um, right. With the broken mirror stories, we would publish all the stories so that the, uh, the readers in this case, not listeners, but we just put them on the website. The, uh, readers could go and see all the stories that people put in and kind of get the same experience that the judges got if they wanted to. Um, they could just, you know, read all the different stories. Now, in this case, it's not kind of the same thing. It's not where you want to see everybody's different take on the same idea kind of a thing. So it wouldn't be as interesting to be getting the stories that are not winners. And so in this case, we will not be doing that. So if you're worried about that, if you didn't want to participate in our contest in the past because you were afraid that if you didn't win, then your story would be wasted. Don't worry about that because we won't be doing that in this case. We're just only the winners will get on the show and nothing will be published on the website. So you can take your story and go your merry way and have it published elsewhere if you want for full money. Okay, that seems fair. And uh, if again, if anybody has questions of things that are unclear, ask them and we will answer it during the drawing. Right. So, hey, I hope a lot of people are excited about this. It seems like this might be an easier contest to judge and to read, to get them all up. Uh, and if so, maybe we'll do it again. Uh, but who knows? It might be a horrible disaster. But that's life. Sometimes you got to go somewhere with the potential for a horrible disaster just so you have a cool story to tell later. Yeah, sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. But yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the uh, this little extra side episode. And uh, we'll be back next time with more Dune Steve for you. Um, your mountain awaits. So get on your way. It's your mountain is waiting. Now, see, you used to say that you were going to end every episode Oh, like okay. That. Well, I'll do that And it lasted about 10 minutes. Yeah, there was other things that I said, too, and... Like I said, I was going to write, and I lasted about 10 minutes, too. Oh, that's right. Okay, your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Yeah. Thanks Good for night. listening, folks. The Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine is published under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. This means that you may share these files with anyone but you may not charge for them or alter them. Take two. Should we uh, give them a date to be volunteered by? So we can just pick a date and say we signed up by March 15th. Okay, but that means... That you will oh. have had two episodes posted before March 15th. Yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. Because this one goes on to the next one, huh? Yeah. Yeah, why don't we just throw out several dates and we'll pick whatever one is closest. We'll just go like every week. Okay. We'll pull so, up the calendar so and let's, I'll say you have to have it done by. Let's pick Sundays oh, whoops, the wrong thing. and we'll say the next day we're assuming we're getting together to record... So we'll, the Sundays will be the deadlines, all right? Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, maybe it would be best if we had a deadline. Just, just you know, just I, I wouldn't want somebody to hear this, you know, uh, six months from now and think that they could <laughs> still participate. Okay, so we will say that you must uh, have sent us an email to volunteer for this contest by March 24th. Okay. By March 31st. Okay. Let's say 17th just for the hell of it. By March 17th. Okay. By April 7th. Okay. 
By April 14th. Okay. By April 21st. Okay. By April 28th. How lazy are we? (laughs) I'm just assuming we won't go too far, but I figured I better say them all just in case. (laughs) 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 (laughs)